well-known fertility doctors. Her success rate at baby making is what gives future parents hope when hope is lost. She's had a hand in creating thousands of happy, healthy babies. Dr. Amy is a Harvard-educated, board-certified OBGYN, specializing in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. But it's her egg freezing parties that put her in the limelight and made her a media darling. So I'd like to hand it over. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for having me here. I appreciate the invitation. And I know you're all looking at my shirt and saying, where can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> it's in your bag. And if you guys take a picture of yourself and tag me in it, you get a free egg whisper consult. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but maybe, I'm not kidding. I don't know. That just sounded like a good idea right now. So, uh, Thank you again. So I just want to start off and talk about what a fertility doctor is, and I put a picture of a church up here. And there's a reason. There's a reason, because people think that medical doctor, when it comes to fertility, means medical deity. And at the end of the day, we're talking about human biology, and when you walk into a fertility doctor's office, we're not God. We can only deal with the biology and the genetics that people bring to our office. And one of the things they wanted to, they asked me to talk about today is what are some advances in science and we haven't come so far so that I can tell a woman who's run out of eggs I have a solution for you we haven't come so far that you walk in my office and you can do IVF and I can actually say something like oh I guarantee you success so I can only work with the biology of the people that are coming to me so people say to me oh my god you're so awesome you're like God to me and I say oh no because I'm not taking credit for this this just has to do with your biology, your genetics, and I'm just a medical doctor. And that's it. So it took me a heck of a long time, though, to figure that an egg and sperm come together. My sister's a cardiac anesthesiologist. She finished her training two years before me, and I'm older. Crazy, right? <laughs> kind of nuts. She saves lives. I try and occupy uteruses every day. So I started at Freezing Party because I'm kind of a social person, as you can tell. I have no problem telling stupid jokes in front of people. And every time I go to a friend's party, every party I go to would turn into an egg freezing party. And then what's all the rage now is what? Like those Lululemon parties or the passion parties. Everyone wants to sell you a pair of jeans or a purse or some makeup or lipstick. And I would go because I like my friends. And then I would end up just teaching everyone about fertility. So then I went to GoDaddy, and it was for sale. And I called my mom, and I was like, Mommy, what do you think? And I buy eggfreezingparty.com. She's like, is this another one of your stupid ideas? But of all your ideas, I like this one. So I went and I bought it. And then the rest is history, because literally two weeks later, Facebook and Apple announced that they're covering egg freezing. And all of a sudden, I had this brilliant idea. And everyone was calling me everywhere from 2020 to Dateline to the night, you know, Nightline, and then egg freezing parties became a thing. So it's not because I want to sell you Tupperware. So, <laughs> and then I had this hashtag, which is keep calm and get ahead of infertility. So I don't want patients to come see me. Like, I like you guys all here, but I don't want you in my office when you're in your 40s looking at me like all my other 40-year-old patients and say, I don't understand why my OBGYN didn't treat, you know, teach me this. I've been getting pap smears for so, so long and no one told me that I can get my levels checked. So you guys are all here, so you're now all egg whispers, and you all now know that a woman can get her fertility levels checked, tracked over time, and you know that you can actually do something to prevent infertility, and that is to stop the clock. Because I basically teach people every single day that your fertility is not skin deep. It doesn't matter how amazing you look. Everyone here looks awesome. You're all super healthy. You probably eat really well. You're exercising but that doesn't really matter when it comes to your eggs. Your eggs don't know how great you look on the outside. Another joke that I tell is, look, I just got Botox. <laughs> you can't put Botox in your ovaries. But apparently you can in your scrotum. Google that. <laughs> 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 Seriously, Google it. I'm serious, Scrotox. <laughs> you might be scared. I posted it and then Facebook came me for a little bit. <laughs> Um, so tonight, really quick, and I talk a lot, so when I'm done, if my time's up, someone will just tell me, I'm sure someone will tell me to stop talking. We'll talk about how to track your fertility over time, pregnancy rates as we age. I'll talk to you about how an egg gets to an embryo in the IVF lab, how to, how to use science to help plan your future family, and I'll just share with you some myths. 
So the first thing that you should know is we're, we're born with all the eggs that we ever have. I have antique eggs, I'm 41 years old. The egg I ovulate right now, and I can say this because I'm 41, is a 41 year old egg. This 41 year old egg has about a 10% chance of being genetically normal. 10% at best, right? But if I had a 21 year old egg, and that was 20 years ago, or whatever, I can't do math right now. If I have that age egg, that egg probably has close to a 95% chance of being genetically viable and genetically normal. And that number of eggs that we have is determined by genetics or environment, that's just a couple of things. And we ovulate an egg every single month, one egg, for the most part, if you're having regular cycles, but we have the potential to ovulate more. So that's when you talk about how many eggs you have frozen when you go through an egg freezing cycle, everyone's number is going to be different because everyone's natural follicle count is different. And I'll teach you guys how to be a fertility doctor in about 10 minutes, okay? So um, you can't compare yourself to your friends. So you can't say to me, well, my 37 year old friend, she had 26 eggs frozen. Why do I only have seven? And I'll say, like, we were different. So we're all different. <laughs> and that potential is based. It's true. People say these things to me. That's why I'm here, so you guys can not say those things to me. <laughs> um, so they're actually ways to determine what your potential is. They really are, and this is what I do all day long. My sister told me not to ever sing, and I'm not going to. I feel like I have a really good rap song coming one day. So there are three things that you can do, basically. The AFC, which stands for antral follicle count. It's easy. I just count balloons, little balls, in your ovaries. And anti-malarian hormone level. That is a hormone test that's done any time in your cycle. It can kind of tell you how many eggs you have left. I describe it as a sperm test for women, right? It kind of gives you a sperm or egg count. And then cycle day three, FSH and estradiol levels. So antral follicle count is an ultrasound. You just look at the little black circles, follicles, count them up. That number kind of tells you what your fertile potential is. You take that number with your age, and, come, and then you take it all together, and you can kind of give someone a really good idea about their fertility. And then you have the hormone level of the AMH, and you can see that the levels go down over time. AMH is a hormone secreted by cells that surround the eggs. The higher your AMH, the more eggs you have. And then you can see that when you have eggs that are that's kind of, um, if you look at your age, your FSH level, you can kind of figure out what your pregnancy rate is. And we just know that we can't be like Donald Trump. We can't. We can't be in our 70s and have a six-year-old. It just doesn't work for them. But what I tell people is that if men ran out of sperm, I promise you there would be a cure. I promise you billions, trillions of dollars would be spent to find a way to help men regenerate sperm. And it's actually being done. You can take a skin cell and turn it into a sperm cell. The technology is there, but not there yet for women. One day. So the process of getting your eggs extracted, I'm going to go through it very quickly is basically the blood work I just told you about, injection, so it's a small shot, skinny of your tummy, tummy, nothing in your butt, you probably, nothing in your butt ever in my office. So you hear about these really long needles, people are always scared, oh, I'm scared of needles, but there's so many ways of getting over your needle phobia. Um, there's really cute things like fuzzy bees or these little things that vibrate, cool your skin first, you don't even feel a shot, and it's a shot a night for 10 nights, and then the egg retrieval is basically an ultrasound while you're asleep. So we make a calendar to make sure that you're not doing your egg retrieval like the night before a bachelorette party or when you're supposed to like fly out to New York to give a big presentation because you're not supposed to do those things when you're hopped up on hormones and really, really bloated. So that's the myth and that's the reality basically. And then while you're going through the treatment, you might feel a little bit bloated. We'll go to the OR. It's still surgery. You'll lie down, put your legs up in stirrups. We'll go to sleep right away. And everyone always wakes up, always. The biggest fear people have is that somehow something's going to happen with anesthesia. Honestly, a lot of people are scared of that. I haven't lost a patient yet. It's supposed to be funny. <laughs> I won't. Okay, don't worry. I didn't just jinx myself. So then, um, ultrasound goes in the vagina. And I used to say every time I said vagina, everyone should take a shot. But I don't see any tequila here. But maybe next time, <laughs> Carla will find a way to bring tequila. Um, and then you just drain the big circles, which remember I showed you those little black circles. They swell as the eggs grow. We put them in test tubes, hand them to the embryologist, and they count them up for us. So there's a lot of misinformation out there online about the pregnancy rates from your eggs, but you don't have to believe, and you shouldn't believe what you read. So your pregnancy rate at your age, you can actually go online to these kinds of tools and find out what your pregnancy rate is. So I've had a patient say this to me. 37 years old, and she's like, well, my pregnancy rate is only 15% with frozen eggs. 
And my answer is, well, can I ask you what you thought the pregnancy rate is for someone at 37? Because that's actually really good. And people are surprised. And I say jokes like, well, we're not bunnies, we're not mice, we're not cats. We are human. So as long as we are human, at the end of the day, we're working with those kinds of statistics. And so if you say a 37-year-old has a 15% chance of pregnancy with her fro frozen eggs, well, a 40-year-old 40 will have a far less chance of pregnancy, even using her fresh, fresh eggs. So um, this is what an egg looks like. And then to fertilize it, we have to do something called ICSI, where you take a single sperm and put it into the egg. And then this is what a fertilized egg looks like. And then we watch the embryo grow. And so what we can do once you get an embryo that's fully expanded is you can do something called PGS or genetic testing. You can find out if it's a normal boy or girl. I only transfer girls, just kidding, to the boys and men. But you don't have to know the gender. The gender can just be my secret and I get to pick all the girls. Um, <laughs> so I just want to talk really quick about some myths. Myth number one is that your FSH and AMH, you can get a level back and it means that you're not fertile. I've had patients with undetectable AMH. I've retrieved one egg from them. I froze it. A year later, they got pregnant on their own. Did not need their frozen eggs. Egg. That wasn't even eggs. So the thing is that these are just clinical tools that guide us. Remember, I'm a medical doctor, not a deity. There's no one that's God. No one can tell you you cannot have a baby, right? Unless, obviously, you know, you're like me. Antique eggs. I'm just kidding. Um, so then... Um, the, the, the hardest part of getting your levels checked is somehow emotionally feeling that you're not as good as you thought you would be, you know, because fertility is related to our self-esteem. And so it's just really important for me to tell everyone here that while your AMH might be one and your friend's AMH is 1.5, you know, you're both awesome, <laughs> okay? So the other uh, myth is that uh, some people think that freezing eggs make you a failure. It's a sad and scary thing. But I actually think it makes it kind of awesome. But I think I'm kind of biased, too. So I froze my sister's eggs kicking and screaming. You know, the one that thinks that she's smarter than me that's a cardiac anesthesiologist. So I froze her eggs literally kicking and screaming. I, drew, I mean, I went to her house. I mean, she lived down the street two houses down, so it was easy for me to do that. I gave her a shot every single night. I picked her up, took her to the OR. Tears, crying, crying, crying. And then I texted her before giving this talk. I'm like, give me one. Like, what? how did you feel after you froze your eggs? And she said it felt like freedom. You know, I don't want to tell people that egg freezing is insurance because it's not, right? It's a chance for pregnancy. But for her, it was very liberating. And it got her out of the douchebag relationship that she was in. That's <laughs> story. She now has two cute kids. Okay? So you're probably wondering why I'm showing boobs. I'm showing boobs for a reason. Because when I travel around everywhere, I go to elevators, and I sit in elevators, and I stand there with my egg whisker shirt, and I go, how many people in this elevator, elevator know that you can freeze your eggs? Usually, no one raises their hand. They think I'm kind of crazy. And then I say, how many people here know that you can get a boot job? Right? It's like, come on, people. Like, why can't we be just as educated about what we can do to our bodies superficially when I, I feel like this kind of information should be out there for everybody? So someone said to me, you should go talk to plastic surgeons and network with them. I said, no, thank you. They don't want to give me a nose job. That's another story, too. That's true. Okay. So another myth is that birth control pills cause infertility, but actually they totally don't. They don't. And there's no such thing as post pill amen amenorrhea. You know, you hear these things where once you stop the pill, you need to wait, and maybe as long as you're on the pill, maybe then you'll get pregnant because the pill causes you know, infertility. But the answer is no, they mask infertility. Because as long as you're on the pill, there's certain things you don't notice. You don't notice if your periods are regular, right? But you can actually get your fertility levels checked. So I called some of the pharmaceutical companies and I said, and I whispered, you haven't heard of me. Now you have. For every time, you know, in every pill pack, you should have just like a little tab that says, get your levels checked. But they don't listen. But one day they will, when a woman owns one of those pharmaceutical companies. So one of you here is going to do that for me. You're going to be like, I remember that Amy, and I'm going to call her, and we'll do that together. So I know we're going to talk more about sperm, but the other thing is that sperm doesn't matter. That's a huge myth. So what I tell people is, I actually did try and throw a sperm freezing party once. And it got really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is you can actually freeze sperm at a sperm freezing party. So I, I did that once. <laughs> and I'm not doing it ever again. But, but 
the reason why I bring that up, and I want you guys to remember that, is you know, if no one ever sees me here or hears of me again, the one thing I want you to remember is if you end up freezing your eggs, you end up having to use them. Spend as much energy and time and research into the health of the sperm that you're using before you thaw your precious eggs. Because your precious eggs are a precious commodity. You only get one chance to do it right. So there's lots of advanced testing that you can do on sperm before you thaw and fertilize them. Okay, so there are lots of easy ways to get to, to know me better. Eggwhisper.com is my website. You can get your levels checked at SHS or dial AMH. If you've had your levels checked and you just want to hear what I have to say about it, we can do um, a quick consult. I'm also starting a new program called freezeandshare.com. It's pretty cool. So when I do my egg freezing parties, I use a lot of them as like a survey group. And I say things like this. How many people here want their eggs frozen for free? Okay, there you go. Okay, so that's what freeze and share basically is. So it's a way that young women can get their eggs frozen for free. Because we had this issue here where people say, well, egg freezing is just for rich people. And I was like, well, that's not how it should be. And then you have this population of young women who need their eggs frozen or want to. And then you have women who need frozen eggs. So this is a way to bring them together. So a young woman can get her eggs frozen. I mean, it's not for free, but it's an exchange for donating half to another family. And there's so many other ways that the program's a good, a good way to go. So um, I just want to say thank you guys. That was probably the fastest I've ever talked to teach someone how to be a fertility doctor. Okay, thank you again for having me. Thank you. Who learned a lot about fertility egg freezing? I know I did. Thank you.